All right, kids, summer break is here. Notice how I didn't call it summer vacation because, for obvious reasons, we ain't going nowhere this year. It's a safe and responsible thing to do. Now, without a trip, there's no need for us to debate whether or not we're going to a beach and why I'm afraid of large bodies of water. I don't like the beach. I'm glad I don't live near one. Sand is just glorified dirt. Ocean water is gross. And I don't see how anyone finds either of those things relaxing. And don't you dare say it's because I can't swim. Whatever the case, at least you've had the chance to go on vacations. Growing up, my mom didn't have a lot of money, so we didn't take a lot of trips. And my mom worked full time, so my summer breaks were spent with babysitters or at my friend's house. After weeks of talking smack to my friends, eating what their families ate, and hearing their parents refer to my mom by her name, I would use way too casual language when talking to my mom. I would ask her if we can eat McDonald's like four times a week, and I would try to call her by her first name. Not to be disrespectful, I mostly thought it was funny. I quickly found out that it wasn't. I'm getting way too far into this, but it seemed like my mom would only say three things to me all summer. She would tell me that she ain't boo-boo the fool. She would ask me if I had McDonald's money, and she would remind me that she ain't one of my little friends. If you know what it's like to change the way you communicate based on where you are and who you're talking to, then you understand today's topic, code switching. I just flipped the switch. Code switching started as a study of multilingual people alternating the language they were speaking from sentence to sentence or conversation to conversation, depending on who they were talking to and where they were talking at the time. In America, code switching is possibly best understood in the context of ethnic minorities trying to fit into the norms, customs, and standards set by the majority. But it's not limited to that. It can go both ways. New York VP Biden. I it's a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. So it's more than just switching your language. It also includes switching dialects, slang, African-American vernacular, and alternating it with standard English. Pair this with something like how we dress, how we do our hair, and even how we greet one another. You know, back when we used to shake hands, we would do that with some, but for the select, we would dap up. Some people would get waves, kinfolk get the nod, I made a video about this. Now, people are most comfortable in their own homes, and they find their families, groups of friends, and their neighborhoods to be safe spaces where they can be themselves. School and work can also be safe spaces, but what do you do when you're one of very few brown people at a primarily white institution, and your accent or the way you speak makes others question your intelligence? What happens when you're one of few black people at work, and how you dress or the way you do your hair is seen as ghetto or ratchet? Well, there are some who do it to advance the culture, who have made different forms of blackness and brownness more mainstream, which makes social mobility easier for minorities. So when your lateral moves become vertical in order to move upward to the next level, you know, to get from the classroom, maybe to the boardroom, you keep your verbiage buttoned up. You put on a metaphorical suit and tie to be more suit a bull. Not that there's anything even wrong with what we do and who we are, but we present ourselves in such a way in order to assimilate, albeit, not fully to those with a higher status, the majority, or just expectations. We present ourselves differently to fit our surroundings. And I'm not trying to suggest that all code switching is intentional. A lot of it is involuntary. Before I continue, some will question if code switching is necessary. A better question is, why don't people feel that they can be themselves in certain places? It's hard carving out new safe spaces for diverse art, culture, and people. It's one thing to have a diverse setting where you're the only one who looks like you, it's another to have inclusion where you're a part of the structure, and it's yet another thing to have a sense of belonging where your voice can be heard. Again, it only seems natural to change according to your environment. For instance, going to the beach. I don't want to be there whatsoever, but I at the very least put on swimming trunks, not necessarily to fit in, but just so I don't stand out. Wearing what I'm most comfortable in would make me uncomfortable in that environment. Also, I wouldn't go into the wilderness in the same stuff that I would wear to the beach. Speaking of the wilderness, we love seeing animals who can seamlessly blend in with every environment or make the new environment their environment, especially when it's narrated by David Attenborough. But when you don't look like or sound like David Attenborough, well, no one does. It may be in your best interest to try to speak the King's English. Good thing Big Snoop narrates wildlife videos now. Oh yeah, it's gonna get real cold up in here right now. What we know to be true in nature and in the wild is also true for people. Being able to adapt will help you survive. By survival, I mean getting the job, their promotion, or just not being disqualified due to an attribute that can be turned on and off. Like a switch. Sure, code switchers will change our speech, maybe even our clothes, maybe even how we greet people. 
hopefully not our hair. None of that changes who we are. As I close, code switching is a skill. It may not be exactly like speaking two different languages, but I guess it's close. Just know that when using this skill, your mother will be able to see through all of it. She ain't boo-boo the fool, and she ain't one of your little friends. And we're gonna be all right. Haircut that.